I was sending proof to my fiance that I'm actually starting to film. So, it's happening. It's official, okay? I've said it. It's happening. Hello, readers and queers. Welcome back to my channel that is still alive somehow, just like me. My name is Franny and today we have a cozy little catch up to ourselves, don't we? So I have my tea that is kind of like brewing, brewing? I have to wait a few minutes to drink it. It's a yogi tea. I love yogi tea as a brand because it's not really tea, but it's flavored water. I cannot drink tea for the life of me. I have tried many times. My dog is walking. Do not distract me. I know you're adorable, but please do not distract me. As I was saying, I really do not like tea. I probably do not know how to make it. It might be that, but I do not like the flavor at all for the life of me. Ah, Jesus, the mug is hot. This one specifically that I'm about to drink is chocolate, licorice, and pepper. So it has that chili bite to it, but at the same time it's sweet. And that's like the best possible combination that you could have if you ask me. I mean, salty chocolate, chili chocolate, these are, you know, delicious flavors. They're, they're, they exist for a reason. Anyways, this is going to be the vibe of this video. So, you know, just go get some tea or some hot beverage of your choice and, and sit down and let's have a nice little chat. Let's catch up, you know, let's talk about what's been happening in our lives. Please, while you're watching this or before or after, whenever you want, drop a comment down below. Tell me how's it been going, what's happening in your life, you know, if you're happy, if you're well. Anything that you want to share, you can do so in the comments and we can have a nice little chat because that's what I'm about to do now. Let's see, when I got back from the summer holidays, we had a couple of weeks where we were settling down in my mom's house. I am currently living at my mom's house. I have for a few months and I will for a few more months while our house gets ready. My partner is doing her PhD and now she in the UK for six months for her you know six months period abroad thing that you have to do that if you want if you can <laughs> while you're doing your PhD and so she left mid-September it's been hard it has been an adjustment and you know it's one of those changes that you know it's going to be a big change in your life even if it's temporary of course but when it actually happens when the time comes it's much harder than you thought it was going to be and you already thought that it was going to be hard and so it took a lot of energy much more energy than I was expecting so I haven't really been able to do much except for you know keep on existing and going to work and eating and doing the things that you need to survive and you know live and function as an adult i haven't even been reading much i've just been watching you know comfort shows and the likes and that's okay that's what i needed and that's what happened and that was the first month or so and then i went to visit my partner for a weekend and we got engaged i got engaged and you know as it happens when you get engaged then you get married <laughs> And we are taking that next step in a week as of the time that I'm filming this. I think I'll be uploading this video on December 1st if everything goes according to plan as I would like. So if you're watching this on December 1st, I'm getting married tomorrow, December 2nd. It has been a month of planning and organizing a lot of things. It takes a lot of time to plan and organize a wedding and ours is not even going to be a big wedding. So I cannot even imagine how other people do it. Yes, usually you have a year or so between you know the engagement and the getting married part and we didn't really have that but still a lot of work goes into it all the smallest tiniest details that you hadn't even thought of when they come up you know it's something that you have to plan and take care of and so there, there's a lot of stuff to be done but as I was saying we are getting married on December 2nd technically we are not getting married. We're doing the civil union because 
it is not legal for same-sex couples to get married in the country where I live in, in Italy and I don't really want to go into it, it's a whole other topic and you know I do not want to bring those kind of vibes and negative energy into this video so I am saying that we are getting married on December 2nd and we are getting married um, on December 2nd. I am getting married to my partner, I'm getting married to my sweet fiance, I am getting married to the love of my life and that's all that matters to me and that's what I'll keep saying. It's not going to be anything big or extravagant, we didn't want any of that. It's going to be something very small and intimate. One of the reasons is because we couldn't really afford anything else at the time being. We didn't really have a budget in the sense that we are basically not spending anything, almost anything, on this wedding reception which is great but the most important reason was that we wanted something small we wanted something intimate we wanted you know a small gathering of people that are close to us that love us that genuinely care for us and that genuinely want to be there for us on that day so my parents are coming some of my fiance's closest relatives are coming and the witnesses and Basically, that's it. It's going to be a very small, intimate thing, how an Italian of me, but I don't care. I think the most expensive thing was the cake, and that's just because we love cake. We wanted to have a good, nice cake, and because my sweeter half had a very specific wish for the cake, and she shall have whatever her heart desires, because I love her with all my heart, and because she's already getting married to me, so she needs to be comfortable compensated in some way. Jokes aside, I am so happy, so excited, so nervous <laughs> about how the, the whole thing is going to play out, but it's going to be great. I will not be sharing any of that here, I think, but if you want, you can follow me on Instagram. I will be posting some pictures, some things, not the day of, probably because I want to be present, I want to enjoy the day and just have fun, but possibly the few days um, after that some photos will be posted and shared because I want to share it, you know, it's going to be a happy day, a joyful day and I cannot wait! And then one week after that we are going on our honeymoon, we're going to the UK during Christmas time, it's honestly a dream, it's going to be fantastic, I, I cannot wait, I am so excited, I am so happy and yes, that's. I think that's all I have to say, I think that's all that's been happening in this crazy, hectic couple of months that I haven't been um, present here. So that was the life update and now let's talk a little bit about books. I thought that a nice way of getting back into the bookish stuff would have been to do the end of the year book tag, so that's, that's what I'm going to do right now. Okay, are there any books you started this year that you need to finish? <laughs> Funny, of course there are, but I will use this prompt to actually get into what I call my wedding, <laughs> my wedding TBR. I am reading slash want to read in this week leading up to my wedding day. I want to read some books that are wedding related and possibly queer. The only book on this list that I've actually already started reading, or better yet, listening to, is The Happy Couple by Nisha Dolan. I hope that's how you pronounce the author's name because Irish names are anyone's guess how you're supposed to pronounce them, at least for me, I, I honestly have no clue. The only thing that I remember and know for sure about this book is that it's about a couple getting married and the woman in the couple is queer, I think bisexual, but she's queer, and they're about to get married and this book is about, I think, the engagement, their wedding day, and figuring out if they're actually right for each other. I think that's a very interesting premise. I've heard great things about this book by Aoife from Words of Clover and I trust her judgment when it comes to books, so I am very excited about this audiobook. I am loving the narrator, by the way, and I cannot wait to keep listening to it. It's very short, it's five hours hours long so I think I can get it done this week, I think I can. The other book that I've started kind of, I don't know if it counts, I read the introduction, does it count? I don't know, but the other book is 
This one, I'm reading it on my Kobo, it's Scrivi Sempre Mezzanotte. This is basically a collection of some of Virginia Woolf and Vita Sackville West's letters to each other. I wanted to read it first of all because I was in the mood for a sapphic love story that had some realness to it and this is non-fiction, these are you know, existing letters that two women actually exchanged throughout their lives so that's very um, interesting and exciting and I love letters, I love reading letters, I love receiving letters my fiance kind of proposed to me with a letter and I also proposed to her with a letter sort of so you know, it's just... I love letters and I am hoping that I can find a quote to use in the... how are they called? Wedding gifts? We call them bomboniere, they're basically small gifts that you give to the guests, the people that come to your wedding as a thank you and you know as a small token, a small object that they can keep to remember the day. And I wanted to see if there was a quote in here that I can use as part of these wedding gifts, so we, we shall see if I, if I find something that inspires me enough to be present in that gift. And the other book that I would like to get to, uh, hopefully in this week, is Something New by Lucy Nicely. This is her graphic novel memoir about her wedding day and I am so excited, I cannot wait. I read Age of License by Lucy Nicely and there was like a weird, I don't know, alignment of planets or something because in that graphic novel memoir she is a 27, she's talking about the age of license, that moment of your life where you are still figuring yourself out, you're actually, you know, becoming an adult and you can afford to make mistakes and it is okay not to be sure about where you're going with your life and everything Thing, and I read it by chance around the time of my 27th birthday and it was such a weird coincidence and I, I don't know, I just loved it. It gave me validation for what I was feeling and for what I'm still feeling right now because I don't know where I'm going with my life but that's a whole other story. I just felt like it was the right book at the right time and so I'm hoping that this book will be the same to me, you know, reading about her wedding the week before my wedding or in the week leading up to my wedding. It's going to be something special and I am so excited, I cannot wait. Second question, first a sip of my tea. Do you have an autumnal book to transition into the end of the year? I have already read the book that made me transition into the end of the year and that I want to recommend to you if you're looking for something that still has an autumnal feel to it, but they can also make you feel like you're entering the winter season, then I recommend you read The Other Ones by Fran Hart. This is a YA book about a boy who lives in a haunted house and he meets this other boy Pax and you know they get to know each other and Pax is you know kind and weird and is not afraid of being different from all the others and he warms his way into Sal's heart. Sal is the other boy and it's just a wonderful story. It is not about haunted houses, there's nothing too paranormal about it. It's about these two boys, you know, warming up to each other and getting to know each other and helping each other to face some things that are going on in their private lives and it was so good. It's about friendship, it's about love, it's about being different, it's about family, so so lovely and it is set starting end of September, beginning of October if I'm not mistaken and you know continuing towards December so it's basically set around this time of the year and it really, the descriptions, you know, the British small town countryside, it really has that vibe to it and I loved it. Is there a new release that you are still waiting for? Yes there is, there are actually two. One is without a doubt volume 5 in the Heartstopper series by Alice Osman. It's coming out December 7th I think and so that is going to be a book that 
I'm going to buy immediately when I go to the UK for my honeymoon. I'm going to go into a bookstore and just buy the book and and that's going to be my wedding gift to me, I guess. I don't know. The other book that is coming out on December 5th is Murder Crossed Her Mind by Stephen Spotswood. This is the fourth book in the Pentecost and Parker series. This is a series of mystery novels that are set around the 1940s in New York and they're queer and I'm listening to the audiobooks and they're just they're just great. The second installment was my least favorite because I don't care about the circus but the first and the third one were so so good and I am so looking forward to the fourth one. It's going to be great like short it's a guarantee what are three books that you need to read before the end of the year <laughs> I have no clue I'll be on my honeymoon okay there won't be a lot of reading being done those two weeks because we'll just be spending time together and walking around and visiting and just enjoying the honeymoon but I will be reading the fifth volume in the Heartstopper series once I buy it, of course. However, I don't think it'll get read immediately because I'm going to want to have like two, three hours to myself with no interruptions whatsoever where I can just sit down and read the whole thing. I will not want or accept being interrupted. So. I'll probably do that after Christmas because before that I, I don't think it's happening. Another Christmas related book that I would like to get to that I already have on my mind is A Redbird Christmas by Fanny Flagg. I'm not sure yet if I'll be able to actually read it because that's a full length novel and for the month of December I have just planned to read a few novellas here and there that are queer and Christmas themed because I won't have much time to dedicate to reading but I will try. I will do my best, okay? I'll try. Is there a book you think will still shock you and become your favorite book of the year? Well, yes, volume 5 of our software, <laughs> what are we talking about? Something new by Lucy Nicely could be great, so, you know, I will be reading some interesting books. Have you already started making reading plans for next year? Yes, yes I have. As you can see from my new channel name, I plan on making reading queer books a priority for me for the future. I want to make this channel a hub for queer book recommendations for queer readers and non-queer readers who want to read queer books. That's what I want to do going forward. So I have already made a list of all the books all the queer books that I'm interested in that are coming out in 2024, at least, you know, the first six months of 2024, and I will be sharing that list with you, but I definitely want to make, you know, that a priority, reading and talking regularly about queer books and also make, you know, book recommendation videos for queer books and different types of um, queer representations in books. And also, and this is something that I have been thinking about these days and that I would like your take on, your opinion on, I have just finished rereading Her Majesty's Royal Coven by Juno Dawson and then went on to read for the first time the sequel, The Shadow Cabinet by Juno Dawson. And I think that that book, that book series has so much to talk about, has so much going on, a lot to give, a lot to unpack, a lot to discuss and I would like to do that on my channel and it would be so interesting to have a sort of read along or let's read and discuss sort of videos and I would like to know if that's something that you might be interested in, it would be something that I would have to plan. This idea came to me because these past few weeks that again have been very stressful and busy for me, I have been re-listening and re-watching, you know, in the background, stripped cover lids videos where Adrian read Harry Potter for the first time and he was discussing it with Dalton and they had so much to say about that series, mostly negative things, and I agreed on basically all of those things wholeheartedly, but it mostly made me think about I don't think there's anything quite like it for any 
queer book series out there there's no queer book series that has you know established itself as a point of reference for queer readers now i'm not saying that i will be making the videos that become that point of reference absolutely not but i do think that her majesty's royal coven is a series that has a lot going on in terms of queer representation in terms of feminism in terms of social commentary diversity of characters of color and all of that and also you know it has magic it has witches it has action adventure and what i would like to do is you know do something similar here on my channel read three or four chapters every week and then come here and talk about those chapters with you guys so that you know we can have a discussion going in the comments and do that for her majesty's royal coven and then the shadow cabinet and then you know the third book human rights which by the way is such a great awesome title i love it because it is spelled you know r i t e s but you know it also sounds like rights like human rights and uh, it's just brilliant sorry i was thinking about it i don't think there's a date yet it might come sometime in 2024 perhaps beginning of 2025 i do not know but it is something that I would like to do here on my channel. So let me know in the comments if you would be interested in doing that and follow along with me and be part of it. But yes, these are my reading plans, some of my reading plans for 2024, for now. Um, I am sure there will be more, but we, sh we shall see. Uh, we shall see how it goes. And I think this is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching it. I know it probably is going to be a long one to watch, Till the end if you do but you know I really wanted to just sit down and have a nice cozy chill chat with you all to update you about what's been going on in my life and hopefully I hear in the comments what's been going on in yours if you want to share feel free to do so please in the comments down below and we had to talk about books and stuff so you know I really I'm happy to be back and I really want to thank you all for still being here and still watching my videos and still leaving comments. It means the world to me and I truly appreciate it more than I can say. I really, really appreciate it. It means the world to me. Hopefully it won't take me three, four months again to upload another video. But first, I have to go and get married, which is very, very exciting, isn't it? So thank you so much for watching. I will see you soon. Until then, have a good one. Take care and keep reading queer books. Bye. Warm hugs. Something else that I love about Yogi Tea is that they have like sentences, like inspirational quotes or whatever um, written on their tea bag thingies, the tea that is not tea. Let's see what this one says. Honor projection because you have been given a chance. Yes, I have.